Hey everybody, it's Molly with All Ears and I'm here today with a brand new video. We did this at all the Disney parks and now it's Universal's turn. I'm gonna be sharing with you how to have a perfect day at Universal Studios Florida. So I'll be sharing tips, tricks, some plans, how to avoid long waits, some great snacks for you to try, all the fun that you can have inside this theme park. I hope you're ready, I hope you're excited. We got a lot to do. in there I do want to point out that this is Universal Studios Florida that is the name of this specific theme park the other theme park that's got Jurassic Park and Hogsmeade and Marvel Landing that's Universal's Islands of Adventure they're two completely different theme parks the same way Magic Kingdom and Epcot are two completely different theme parks so today's video is all about this theme park Universal Studios Florida and we'll have another one coming soon with Islands of Adventure it's about 9 30 right now the park officially opened at 9 um, i was in line to park at that time so i definitely recommend getting here early even earlier than i was this morning um, but one thing i will say is that this morning they had early park admission at this park for their resort guests early park admission is a perk of staying at universal's resorts and one of the two parks will open up early with a couple of attractions so you can avoid the line but has actually worked out well for us. Even though you're seeing a decent amount of people already in the park, even though it just opened up to the public not too long ago, one of the attractions that is open during that early park admission is Escape from Gringotts. And right now, there's literally no line posted on the app. It says, ride now. So, looks like everybody who came for early park admission already wrote it, and now we can go ride it hopefully without a line. Oh my gosh, it's hashtag the panda! Hi, hashtag! <laughs> we have made it to the Harry Potter section. The longest line right now, hello, <laughs> is King's Cross Station to head over to the other park. If I were to guess, a lot of the folks that came over for early park admission rode what they wanted to here, and now they're trying to get over to ride Hagrid's, maybe Velocicoaster if it's soft opened over at the other park. So. That is a good move, but it's already 65 minutes. Uh, I did avoid waiting at it during my secret to having the best day for Harry Potter, how to do everything Harry Potter in one day. We'll link that for you. And here we go. Ah! We're here, we're here, we're here. Can you believe it? I can't. It literally says ride now. I have never seen that happen but this may be the first secret for the day. Gotta drop our stuff off in a locker. Oh, they're going a different way. I like this, spread the crowd out a little bit. If you're unfamiliar, several of Universal's more thrilling attractions, you do have to put your things into a locker. The smaller lockers are free, the bigger lockers are $2. Um, so you have to put backpacks, cups if you have them. You can bring on to this attraction if you have a fanny pack or something you can put in your pocket, but you're gonna wanna put everything else in a locker, they won't let you on. All right, my stuff's in a locker. Make sure you take with you whatever you use to open your locker. So you can use your mobile ticket on the app. You can use a physical ticket or your room key. Make sure you take whatever you use to open your locker. You'll need that thing again to ride and we're off. All right, still says ride now, 10 minutes. This is amazing. The last time I rode this during that Universal uh, Harry Potter day, which was amazing. I waited like oh, an hour and a half for this ride. So, ah, we're at the bank. We're here, we're in Green Nuts. Oh my gosh. This is the best time to ride this, I've just determined. Because now you can go through the bank and have practically no one else in here and look at all the goblins. If you're unfamiliar with the plot of this attraction, you are stepping into the story at the exact moment that Harry, Ron, and Hermione are here at Gringotts, the Wizarding Bank, trying to get the Horcrux out of Bellatrix the Stranger's Vault. So you're going to come through the lobby here. You're going to see all of the fellas, the goblins. Hello, sir. If you wish to open an account, make your way to the security office. Will do. Where your Gringotts identification photo will be taken. Okay. Then... Go directly to the office at the end of the corridor. Mm -hmm. From there, you will be escorted to the vaults. Okay, thank you very much. Well, 
That's all. Oh, okay, here I go. Move along. I'm sorry. One of my favorite details in this queue are the newspapers that actually move. And again, we are in that exact moment in Harry Potter and the Deathly Hallows when Harry, Ron, Hermione break in. So you've got Dumbledore's obituary, Snape being named headmaster. You've got one of the pamphlets about mudbloods that the ministry had been printing out. A lot of really cool props to look for. I could look at these all day. I think they're so cool. There's Rita Skeeter right there on her Dumbledore's Life and Lies book promoting that. Headed into what would have been the pre-show, first pre-show, where Bill Weasley would have talked to us about doing a little tour. One of my favorite Easter eggs right there. It's hard to see, but that's the family portrait of the Weasleys in Egypt from Harry Potter and the Prisoner of Azkaban. Here would be our second pre-show where you get on the goblin elevator to take you down into the depths, but we're just walking through right now. I yearn for the day that pre-shows come back. I, I hope we're close. Um, they have decreased social distancing. The markers are now three feet apart, and here at Universal, there aren't temp checks anymore, so maybe that means pre-shows will be soon. I just think they add so much to attractions. We are almost to the load area. They just handed me my 3D glasses. If you've never been on this attraction, it is a roller coaster 3D simulator hybrid. Again, through the vaults of Gringotts, it has a 42 inch height requirement and it is so much fun. Little pro tip with the 3D glasses, pull your mask all the way up and then put the glasses kind of on the bridge of your nose. These are very bad at fogging up. But if you kind of go like this, and look like this. You look ridiculous, but it'll work. Escape from Gringotts done. Check it off the list. Oh, so much fun. Definitely a must do for my coaster fans and my Harry Potter fans. Took more like 15 minutes. I also do want to point out the single rider lines are open here again in Universal. I chose not to use it um, because the weight was so low and I wanted to go through the bank. When you go in single rider, you kind of get routed around it and I love going through there. So Keep that in mind, single rider lines are usually faster though. They're gonna sit you with another party. Um, I was still sat with another party, which that hasn't happened to me yet um, in about a year. So change is a happening. But yeah, wanna track you down. I definitely think coming here first is a great move. And let's go do some other things. At this point, we've got about 10 minutes left of the breakfast window here at the Leaky Cauldron and no wine. So we are gonna go grab ourselves a delicious, hello! <laughs> Thank you, we're gonna go grab ourselves a delicious wizard breakfast. I found that the breakfast over at the Three Broomsticks was fabulous. I love going into the Harry Potter restaurants. Now what's interesting is I tried to place a mobile order, which is normally what I do when I'm in line. So that way when you sit down, you've got your order already and you can just click on here, prepare my order and let them know what table you're at. But it said, this restaurant is not currently accepting orders. Please come back during operating hours which clearly it's operating hours right now. So it's kind of looking like they're having people order at the register. We're gonna find out together. I just absolutely adore it in here. It looks like you have stepped into Harry Potter, into you're literally at the Leaky Cauldron. All I can think about is Harry Potter and the Prisoner of Azkaban when Harry stays at the Leaky Cauldron. He's upstairs right now in one of those rooms, right up there. It could be, it could be, look how Hollywood this goes. This is so cool. So they had some technical difficulties for mobile order. So they just had us order at the register, but the food's gonna come out to my table, easy peasy. Whole process took about 10 minutes or so. My breakfast is here. So I decided to go for the mushroom and leek and egg pastry. So that's all right in there. Comes with some roasted potatoes and fruit. And when you order off the breakfast menu, everything comes with a drink. You can choose from juice, coffee, tea, but you can also get specialty beverages. So I got a hot butter beer to start the day. I do like that the drinks come with it because that hot butter beer would be $8 otherwise. This whole thing was $17. Pro tip, if you order off the kids meal, they don't have as many selections. They have like pancakes, eggs, bacon, but you still get the drink and it's a lot less, less monies. But I'm really excited to try this. Let's get in there. Oh yeah. Yum. Scrambled eggs, mushrooms, and leeks inside my pastry. 
It's this kind of like wizard quiche is what it's reminding me of. Whoa. That is so good. Oh my gosh, it's so mushroomy. I love mushrooms, so you have to like mushrooms. But the crust is crispy and flaky at the same time. And then you've got your egg. It's almost like a biscuit. It reminds me of a biscuit. It's like egg and mushroom and leek were shoved into a delicious biscuit. Besides fish and chips, this is my favorite thing I've ever eaten at one of the sit-down restaurants in the Wizarding World. Let's try these potatoes. They look great. Mm. A great roasted potato. Rosemary, that's my strongest scent besides potato. And a nice bounty of fruit. Mm. Squash it down with the delicious hot butter beer. I really, oh, the hot butter beer. So it's like drinking a cupcake. And I know it's like contradictory to everything I ever say about how I don't like sweet drinks. And this is so sweet, but I love it. It makes me really feel like a wizard. Well, we had a lovely breakfast at the Leaky Cauldron. We are back out of the wizarding world and headed to our second attraction of the day. This is truly one of my favorite attractions. And you're going to think I'm kidding because it's highly revered as one of the worst attractions of all time but I love it in a most ironic way. It's time for Fast and the Furious Supercharged because I'm ready to go to a party. Now this attraction does often go to virtual line only. I did get a virtual line while I was headed into Leaky Cauldron on the Universal app. Super easy, you can sign up there. Just go to the virtual line venues, let them know how many in your party's available times will come up, if there are any left. And oh wow, am I excited. Fast and the Furious Supercharged has a 40 inch height requirement and you are going to get on a party bus with the gang from Fast and the Furious and go to a sweet party because Vin Diesel won another street race. Look at that, they've been partying, they've got their Coronas, we're headed into the garage, oh yeah, here we go, here's the garage family forever. They say family a thousand times on this attraction, just like in the movies. It's so great. Now I say I love this attraction, ironically, because I do love this attraction. I think it is so hilarious. It is so ridiculous. It is a ride based on the Fast and the Furious films, so it's exactly what you expect. So I would never tell you to wait more than maybe 30 minutes for it. But if you can go in it with the mindset I go in, which is polarity, I think you'll love it. So if you guys don't know, this is my boss, Don Toretto. We have this lovely picture of him that I stare at a lot. Sure. guys didn't need to know that information, so we'll just move past that. So he is out racing right now. Uh, hasn't actually won the race yet. Good job. Pretty good at what he does. We're pretty sure he's gonna win. So we went ahead and planned the party, and you guys are lucky enough. The bus guy said that once so far, it's supposed to be the bomb diggity. That was a very awkward silence. Uh -huh. Jamie, yeah. the buses are here. Okay, good, because the fans are feeling that whole bomb diggity situation you got set up down. Hey, don't look at us I like that. I got this, Jamie. He don't got this. Duh, like he did. You know it's still broken. I'm on. I hope she ain't close. I hope she needs our help. Team. You're the team, guys. Spread the word. I spread the word. But keep it up. <laughs> Tell your friends. Keep it quiet. Forget your friends. You don't need them anyways, okay? Um, there's a ball man. It's hot. He's beautiful. Hops, my man. All right. What up? <laughs> Jamie was so good today. I've said it before and I'll say it again. If I worked at Universal Orlando, the one job I would want is to be either Pat or Jamie in the pre-shows for this attraction. The things I love. They say family 10,000 times. And Ludacris just talks in his own song lyrics. It's so great. All right, it's almost my turn to party. They load it road by row. I also want to shout out to the dedication. Thank you. The fact that the animatronic driver 
has a mask on. Very good Universal, very funny. I love that attraction. It is so ridiculous. Like, literally, the FBI agent is pointing a gun at them, and he goes, I'm the one holding the gun. And then Dwayne The Rock Johnson comes in and goes, yeah, but mine's a whole lot bigger than yours. Let's go, cookie puss. That's insane that that's part of a theme park attraction. It is so funny. I love it. If you can get a virtual line and not wait a minute like I did, ride it, but ride it knowing it's ridiculous. Look all around the whole time in the actual scene. I'm like, because like Dwayne R. Johnson's beating up a guy over there. Vin Diesel's riding a helicopter. Michelle Rodriguez is murdering Gaston from beating the beast. It's so ridiculous, but I love it. Next up, we're gonna get in a little theme park entertainment. One of my favorite theme park entertainment bits, truly anywhere, is about to start the Beat Builders. They're kind of like the Jammeters over at Epcot, but they're a little harder, a little rockier. <laughs> must do for me when I'm here at Universal Studios Florida. Their sets aren't that long, but I love it when they sing Michael Jackson, well, when they beat the drums to Michael Jackson, but not even the drums, it's the construction site. All right, it's just about noon. We've already had a great day. So far, my best tips are go to Escape from Gringotts first thing, and you won't have to wait too long. Uh, my next tip, if you do, if you do want to ride Fast and the Furious Supercharged, grab that virtual line early. Uh, they, it already says that they're done for the day. They usually will give out more as the day goes on. They'll reopen them as the crowds fluctuate, but as of right now in the app, it says there aren't any. So we are now gonna do one of my favorite attractions, Revenge of the Mummy. And two things single rider is open five minute wait so i could do the single rider but i also want to talk about one of my favorite things in the universal app and that is the wait time alert so the wait time alert is a really cool feature in the app that i don't think a lot of people realize is there and they don't have it on the disney app mere moments ago this had an hour long wait so i set in a wait time alert to drop it down and let me know when it has a 15 minute wait and it just let me know just now. So if there's an attraction that you want to do and it's got a 30 minute wait that you don't want to wait in, not that 30 minutes is long, an hour, whatever it is, go ahead and set that wait time alert and then they'll send you a push notification when it drops to that point, if it drops. So it was at 35 earlier when I set the alert, then it was at 55, now it's at 15 for the regular line or single riders five. So let's go tackle the mummy. All right, here we go. 15 minute wait, regular, five minute wait, single rider. We're gonna go ahead and do the single rider on this one. I do like this queue quite a bit. Um, but let's go check out where single riders go. I don't think I've ever done single rider here, so we're gonna find out together. If you're unfamiliar with what single rider is, basically it's saying that your party's gonna be split up or that you're one person like me. So if you came in with a party of four, you're welcome to go in the single rider line, but your party is gonna be split up because you're just gonna be used to fill in available seats from other people. This is the first time I've seen single rider back since before the closure. I haven't seen it come back at Disney, but clearly it's back at Universal. And, ooh, this is still fun. It's still scary going through the single rider queue, bypassing some of the cool stuff. Um, so if it is only 15 minutes or low, and you've never been in this queue, you might as well. Single rider, okay, we go here. But we did bypass a lot of it. Um, I also recommend if it's only 15, 20 minutes or so and you're with your party, go with your party, ride it together. But it gets really long. 
This is a very popular attraction, and it's better, in my opinion, to split up and not sit together than wait for an hour or longer for an attraction. But yeah, using single rider, that was a walk on. Hello. Thank you. Two, okay. Revenge of the Mummy, so much fun. It does have a 48 inch height requirement and it is kind of scary. Um, I mean, it is about a, a scary mummy god guy who wants to steal your soul and he does take the soul of a couple people on the attraction so you know know your kids maybe they're not into that maybe you're not into that but no one does a story coaster quite like universal they do the perfect blend of dark ride theming plus thrill and that attraction is awesome taking a short break from rides. There are two different shows here at Universal Orlando. I'd love to see both of them today. One of them has been around since the park opened. It's the horror makeup show. It's very funny. The performers are very cheeky and it shows you how they do horror movie makeup because you know Universal Studios is home to a lot of the most classic and iconic movie monsters of all time. Frankenstein's monster, Bride of Frankenstein, Mummy, Creature from the Black Lagoon. The other show is the Born Stunt-tacular, which is a new show, just opened up a few months ago, and it's a stunt show about the Born series. So both have a 1215. It's about 1210 right now. I've had very bad luck getting into the Born show um, before, but we'll see if my luck has broken. Hopeful that today is the day it still says 12.15 for the next show time, so that's a good sign. They're asking how many. And so that's a great tip. If you want to see both the shows, they have similar show times. Both had a 12.15 and a 1 listed on the app. So maybe check on Born Stuntacular. That's the more popular show. And then go over and check uh, the horror show if you can't get in. And then flip-flop them afterwards. Full disclosure. I've never seen this show because I never can get in without having to wait a really long time. So I'm very excited to see it. From what I understand from Julia Stiles, we are going to be tracking Jason Bourne, a.k.a. Matt Damon, but he's hard to trace because he looks like a normal person. He thinks she's dead. And we are going to be tracking Jason Bourne to make sure that he's... I don't really... Someone named Director Dixon wants to see what Bourne's up to, and Julia Stiles hoped that Director Dixon doesn't murder Jason Bourne, but we're going to observe Jason Bourne in a brand new technology that'll make it feel like we're part of the action. That's the plot. Great news. This is the motorcycle used in the Bourne Ultimatum, and you could buy it. So, maybe that's a take-home you'd like. Oh, this is used in the Bourne Identity. I love that movie. I could buy this? Should I ask how much it costs? I probably should. Whoa. Wait, that show was awesome. So it is a stunt show. I wasn't allowed to film for the safety of the performers and because of the technology. But this is basically what Fast and the Furious wishes it was. They use screens as well as physical prop sets and right, live actors, but it's really, really seamless and there's times where you don't know what you're looking at. There's times where it's more obvious. I'm not going to say it's flawless, but there are times that it's very convincing that it, it was really cool. There's a part that they like literally do it in slow-mo, like the actor moves in slow-mo and it looks like an action shot around. It was really, really cool. And if you're a stunt show fan, you don't have to be a Jason Bourne fan. I've only seen the first one, even though I love that movie. Um, maybe the second one. Those movies are old. Um, but I really like that show. So if you're a stunt person or an action show person or you like action movies, definitely check that one out. Now let's find out how much that car costs. <laughs> Apparently I can't read because it's saying the movies of it. Lord, for sale, not the motorcycle. 
I was like, oh, wow, what a treat. You could buy a car from the movie, but you could literally just buy the movie. Okay. <laughs> We're gonna do another show now. We're gonna do the Halloween Horror Nights makeup show. This is a great time. You could do some other rides right now. Rides are kind of at their mid. Hello. <laughs> yes, just one. Trust uh, me on this. The rest of the rides are kind of at their mid to peak weights right now, um, being about 30, 45 minutes for several things. There's a few things that are under, um, but it is about one o'clock. So I'm gonna take this time while it's still drizzling too a little bit to check out the Halloween horror makeup show. This is really cool. Got all these props and makeup things in here. Here's the creature from the Black Lagoon. Chocolate syrup was used to make the knife in Psycho since it was black and white. How interesting. Um, so we're going to go check out this show as well. I know not everyone's a show person, and maybe you want to use this time to go eat or do some rides, but I want to use this time. Oh, my gosh. Oh, my gosh. Oh, my gosh. I got distracted. Um, I didn't look at this last time I was in here, or this was covered up. This is from Jaws. Is that real? No. That can't be real, right? I have to find out right now if this is really... No. Crabs from Jaws. There's the shark. Are these real shark teeth? Am I gonna have to have a moment again? Okay, these are real props from real movies. Like, those were actually used in Jaws. I'm having a moment, but the show starts in one minute. Oh, Beetlejuice is in here. Um, this is awkward, and I'll be back in a second. Hi, Beetlejuice. I'm good, how are you? Yeah, you look good. What? You look good. I know. I know. Okay. <laughs> oh, actually, stay right there, Vera. Sorry, I just kind of. Sorry, stay. Uh, it's not you. It's me. Sorry. <laughs> Social distance crap. All right. All right, Vera. Let's get you fixed up here. All right. All right. Two hands. Two hands. Hold still. All right. I don't want to get it on the curb. All right. So hold still for me. There you go. <laughs> Not on the carpet, I said. <laughs> uh, I gotta start over. <laughs> uh, 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 well, she's a growing girl. So. Uh, how many in your party, man? Uh, is that enough? I'll decide. Uh, all right, I should hold you. All right, spread the love, Vera. Spread the love. Nice work out of here over there. Nice work. Uh, those guests seated in the front row, please place your belongings under your chair, your drinks, your backpacks, your children. Let's go, Vera. Under the chair. <laughs> and, and your sister. And the uh, cell phones are fine. Just turn the sound out of those suckers. Will your friend turn the volume down on the cell phones? All right, try to get scream. <laughs> Scream like you just saw me in the thong. <laughs> You're welcome. Okay, cool. I'm going to take this knife. I'm going to cut your arm off, okay? And then I will give you a matching set, all right? So we'll give you a little band for your arm. Um, when I cut you, I want you to scream. I want everybody to think that it's hurting. Obviously, it's not. But I need you to make everybody think it. So on the count of three, let me hear you. Ready? One, two, three. Oh. Not bad. Oh. One, two, three. Oh, what's wrong? I'm sorry. What's the matter? There are some kids in the audience. Oh, you want me to cut a kid? <laughs> <laughs> Put together by trained professionals. Don't try this stuff at home, okay, ladies? You try it at your friend's house. That's right. <laughs> with that, you guys scream with PJ. Ready? One, two, three. I've never gotten this far, so I don't know. <laughs> Does that feel better? Yeah, that works for me. I'll just keep cutting. Uh, obviously, it's not real, you guys. I'm just going to kind of show you how it works. It's a, um, it's a retractable knife. See how that works? See that? Okay. There's your blood bulb in the back. So you're pretending to cut. Obviously, it's not sharp, right? So you're pretending to cut. It goes over. Looks like you're really cutting into the skin. This was designed by Tom Savini when he was working on the original Dawn of the Dead. Blade is not sharp. PJ is okay. Okay, that show is so funny. The care, the like two performers are ad lib a lot of stuff and they're hysterical. That show is really fun. 
I recommend that one if you are a horror movie fan, if you're a Universal fan. Um, this is one of the opening day things at the park. Really cool, it's about 20 minutes or so. They show you how they do some effects. Again, they're very funny. Definitely recommend it if you're a show person. Um, and we're gonna go check out the little gallery at the beginning of it again, because they have props from real Universal movies, including Jaws and Jurassic Park, that I definitely wanna see. One thing I think Universal has done amazingly throughout this is their distance meet and greets are really fun. You pro Hi! You probably just saw Gru and the girls having a little dance party and they'll rotate who comes out here. So it could be the Simpsons, it could be Despicable Me, it could be Shrek characters. It's so fun. Okay, we're back to look at the real Ben Gardner. Oh my gosh. All right, if you don't know Jaws scene by scene, let me set it for you. They have caught a shark. It's what kind of shark? A what? A tiger shark. Hung it up by its tail as the shark is hanging there. Brody slaps him across the face. I just found out that a girl was killed here two days ago and you, you. Matt Hooper comes over. He breaks, I didn't know what you were serving. I brought red and white. There's a license plate. He didn't need a car, did he? You know this boat? Yeah, that's Ben Gardner's boat. There's a hole in the boat, but what pops out of the hole? Whoa! Ben Gardner. Pops right out of the hole. And that's the scene. And Steven Spielberg said, because of that scene, that was the first good jump scare in that scene. That's before you ever see the shark's face or anything. That's the first jump scare. And Steven Spielberg said, the minute you give a jump scare, the audience is never gonna trust you. And they're always gonna jump bigger at the first one than the second one, which is why most people jump more when they see Ben Gardner's face than the first time the shark comes out of the water in the iconic, you're gonna need a bigger boat moment. Because the audience doesn't trust you anymore and they know something could jump out at any time. Ben Gardner, actually used in the film Jaws. I'm freaking out a little bit. Okay, but let's go look at the non-Jaws props. So these were used, it looks like, oh, and some of the original things. This looks like Phantom of the Opera. And I did talk to a cast member, team member, who said this stuff was real. So this really was used in the Phantom of the Opera. Look at this, look how amazing this is. Okay, there's a bust of Lon Chaney, one of the original pioneers of monster makeup. Known as the man of a thousand faces, I just learned. He was Phantom of the Opera and Quasimodo. Let's see, this looks like this is from The Mummy and from Frankenstein. Look at this. This is amazing. Wow. Oh, here's a, a hello, sir. The Phantom is here. Okay, Lon Chaney Jr. Oh, he was in The Wolfman. Here's some stuff about that and how they made The Wolfman. This is Bud Westmore's work. He did Creature from the Black Lagoon. Oh, Hitchcock, everybody knows Hitchcock. Is this real Hitchcock stuff? This can't be. Is this really the knife they used? No. But I bet that really is a dress. I'm gonna confirm. They said all this stuff is real. The team member said it was all real. I'm just having, my mind is having a hard time understanding that. And here's the giant head from it came from outer space. A team member did just tell me that this is all real makeup on loan from Lon Chaney's like, estate and family. So this is really used. That is so cool. We also have some stuff, a dinosaur egg, a raptor claw. That must be the one that Dr. Alan Grant scares that kid with at the beginning that he keeps in his satchel. Giant turkeys. Looks like a bird. It's not so scary. And then you have a velociraptor that was actually used in Jurassic Park. Literally right there. I'm having a moment. Clever girl. Uh, let's keep the fun times going with Chucky. Who doesn't want to see Chucky? That is actually a nightmare. I'm going to keep moving. Ooh, much more whimsical and fun. It's the, 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 the Grinch. Actual prosthetics used for Jim Carrey's transformation for the Grinch. 
amazing. This is one of my favorite movies, one of my husband's favorite movies. We watch it about a million times every December. American Werewolf in London. Wow, 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 wow. Okay, this is scarier than I like to get into. I don't even know what movies those are from because I'm scared. Um, okay, The Mummy, like the new Tom Cruise one. Props from that and stuff from Halloween Horror Nights. This is so cool. If you're a movie person, if you like any of the movies I just said or you're a movie buff at all, even if you don't go see the horror makeup show, come in here and check out these props because like that's a dinosaur from Jurassic Park. What? Hi! Hi Shaggy! Hi Shaggy! <laughs> so for me, seeing fun characters is part of a great theme park day. And I know that most people are more passionate about Disney characters, myself included, but they have some really fun ones here. And I feel like they've done a great job with the meet and greets. They've got SpongeBob and Patrick out sometimes. Characters from Trolls, who I love to see. Scooby-Doo, Shrek, Despicable Me. They have a lot of Beetlejuice will come out, Marilyn Monroe, The Simpsons. A lot of beloved characters will come out, and you can find a lot of them here on this pathway. Let's get the adrenaline back up and go check out Rip Ride Rocket. I need to do another roller coaster. Also, I'm getting hungry, and I don't want to do that afterwards. So a couple other attractions you could do. Maybe you're not into shows like I am. You can always see Shrek 4D, which I do enjoy. It's a... 4D experience, think like Captain EO used to be over at Epcot. So the seats are gonna move and it tells a Shrek story. It's actually very funny, I enjoy it a lot. You've also got Despicable Me Minion Mayhem here, which is honestly not my favorite attraction. It used to be 3D, and I actually think it was better in 3D, even though it made me more sick. Now it's just a Minions, it's like watching a giant screen. And it's a Minions themed attraction. The best part is partying with the Minion at the exit, but if you've got Minion obsessed kids, I actually recommend getting to that one early because it's a pretty long line throughout the day. But we are headed to Rip Ride Rocket all the way up there. Rip Ride Rocket is one of the most intense roller coasters at Universal Orlando. You're not even allowed to bring in your cell phone or anything in your pocket. You have to go through a metal detector. Oh my gosh, that part at the top is so stressful. But what's cool about Rip Ride Rocket is that you get to select your soundtrack. There are dozens of different songs to listen to and it blares in your speakers like Rock and Roller Coaster, but you have a choice. All right, here we go go. The single rider line is open, so I'm going to head in there, even though it is only a 20 minute wait otherwise. Survived Rip Ride Rocket. I think this attraction is very fun if you're a roller coaster person. This part right here going straight up is nerve wracking. And then you go straight into this loop-de-loop -loop right here. Now, I will say, if you get headaches on roller coasters, I can almost guarantee you will get a headache on this roller coaster. It is not very smooth, it is rickety, it throws your head around a lot, so if that stresses you out, maybe one you wanna skip, but I do think it's a really fun coaster. I like that you get to pick your song. They also have secret menu songs. If you hold down the Rip Ride Rocket logo and then type in certain codes, it will get you other songs. 302 is I Want You Back by the Jackson 5. 902 is the Rainbow Connection by Kermit. So you can ask the team members for other secret songs as well. All right, at this point, I think we're due for another feeding. We're having a great day so far. A couple more attractions I definitely want to do to be part of my best day ever at Universal Studios. One of them is right here, Transformers. Just looked on the app, it's got a posted 35 minute wait, which isn't too bad, but I set a wait time alert for 20 minutes or less. I really think it'll drop later in the afternoon. I also would love to ride the ET Adventure which doesn't normally have too long of a wait, but we just haven't been back down that far yet, as well as Men in Black Alien Attack. I love that one too. So let's go get something to eat, and then let's go down towards that end of the park and, and do uh, E.T. and Men in Black. We are going to grab some lunch at this food truck right here. Universal loves to set up food trucks for different things, whether it be Mardi Gras, Halloween, Horror Nights. They had some during the holidays, and they've got new Summer Bites ones out. I've seen two of them so far. 
This one has a couple different sandwiches and mac and cheese. Sign me up. Here is my lunch from the food truck. He recommended the brisket grilled cheese. Yum, look how cheesy that looks. And then I grabbed a side of the white cheddar mac. The best part of this spot, the view. Hey Bruce, I'll get you some mac and cheese in a second, pal. All right, let's try this grilled cheese. OMG. I wasn't sure about the brisket. I was gonna get just the three cheese mac one, but that is so good. Oh my gosh, it's so cheesy. The bread is perfectly toasted and buttered, and I'm a huge grilled cheese fan. Like grilled cheeses are one of my favorite foods of all time. Look at all that cheese. Mm. That brisket is smoky and delicious. It's all over my face per usual. So cheesy. Definitely a big enough sandwich to share. Mm. All right, let's see how the mac and cheese stacks up. The sandwich is really good, but how's the mac? The mac is better than I expected. It's got breadcrumbs on top, creamy. Not my favorite. Quick service mac and cheese is apparently really hard. I very rarely find quick service mac and cheese that's really good because none of them use a strong enough cheese. So the mac is fine. Don't say, don't know if I'd recommend that. But this sandwich. Finished up my delicious lunch, so obviously I need to come over and say hello to my BFF. Bruce, hey buddy. I missed you. Bruce was gone for a little bit and he's back now. And I gotta say, something's missing. Do you know what it is? It's the rope that used to hold him up, which is, it went right here is why he looks like the Joker now, because the rope is gone. So what you're trying to tell me is that somebody caught him, hung him up without any rope on his fins. They just hung him up from his tail, and yet still his mouth is shaped out like that, like he's popping up to say hello. I'm not buying it. I would like the rope to come back. But we gotta take our selfie no matter what. We know true beauty's on the inside, right? Bruce, even though you look a little different, you're still my best friend and I love you. Selfie with Bruce, a must. All right, let's go back to my favorite land now. I know I said we were gonna go to Men in Black and E.T., but I just realized the last showing of one of my favorite shows is coming up soon, so let's go have dessert and watch that show in The Wizarding World of Harry Potter, and then we'll ride E.T. and Men in Black. We are gonna be grabbing my favorite dessert, not only in The Wizarding World, but all of Universal Studios right now and it's ice cream from Florian Fortescue's, which is the ice cream shop in Harry Potter. The one that Harry goes to, specifically in Prisoner of Azkaban. But they have so many unique flavors here. They've got butterbeer ice cream. They've got Earl Grey spicy chocolate chili. Um, Harry's favorite, which is a peanut butter and strawberry sundaes. Their ice cream is so good. So we're gonna grab that and then watch some of the entertainment. If you're not an ice cream person, of course you have to have butterbeer. That could be a great dessert. Um, but we already had our butter beer. Uh, you could also grab ice cream if you don't want to come to the Wizarding World of Harry Potter. There's very good ice cream over by where the board show is. They've got the Hagen dazs right there. Um, also other treats in the Wizarding World of Harry Potter. You could go over to Sugar Plums, which is the candy shop in this section. You could get chocolate frogs, pumpkin pasties, that no melt ice cream. Lots and lots of good stuff to choose from, but for me, it's all about the ice cream. <laughs> For today's scoops, I got one scoop of strawberry peanut butter, which is again Harry's favorite flavor, and one of sticky toffee pudding. Mm. Strawberry peanut butter is so good. It tastes like a PB and J. It's Harry's favorite flavor, so it's my favorite flavor. Mm. And the sticky toffee pudding is so good. You really can't go wrong. If you can't decide, ask the witch or wizard. They'll help you decide. Um, I've also tried the chocolate chili, which is really fun. There's a sundae you can do with the strawberry peanut butter. You can make anything a sundae. They also have a lot of soft serve, butterbeer flavor, but I don't know why. I think it's because it's magic ice cream, but it's really good. It's like the best ice cream I've ever had, except for the France Pavilion at Epcot. So on my best day ever, we eat ice cream. While we eat our ice cream, just waiting for the 
tales of Beetle the Bard to start. This is a show where they come out and they tell the tale of Beetle the Bard, which you may remember from the Deathly Hallows. My favorite is when they tell the tale of the three brothers, which is the story of the Deathly Hallows. They bring out puppets and it's really, really cool. Check the Universal app for times. The other entertainment they have here is Celestina Warbeck and the Banshees. You may recall her as the um, singer, the jazz singer that Molly Weasley likes to listen to. She comes out and sings. Check the app for times for that again. But I love both of those. I love live entertainment of all kinds in the theme park. So grab a butter beer, grab a beer, grab an ice cream cone, and watch some entertainment in Diagon Alley. Had my delicious treat. Now ET is down for technical difficulties. Um, Transformers still is a 35 minute wait. Men of Black Alien Attack has about a 30 minute wait. And there's one more show I want to see that starts kind of soon. So in the meantime, what we're going to do is a little magic. Also, one of my favorite things about Universal and the Wizarding World of Harry Potter is the interactive magic. I think it's so cool as a diehard Harry Potter fan that I have my very own magic wand that I bought at Ollivander's and I can go around and perform spells. If you want to watch the video where I get this wand and learn all about the wands and the magic and the Ollivander's experience, we will link that for you. But if you're a diehard Harry Potter fan, you're going to want to get a wand. You're going to want to do some magic. So let's go do it. Maybe we'll do some shopping while we're at it. Who's to say? If you don't have a wand and you'd like to do the wand experience, which is at Ollivander's, Ollivander's is incredibly popular, but they have been opening it up for Universal Resort guests at early park hours. So I would recommend staying at a Universal Resort, getting that early park hours, coming in early and doing the Ollivander's experience. Because it is really, really cool. It's one of my favorite things I've ever done in the theme park, but it gets really long and really kind of unfortunately, there's no way to pre-sign up for it. If you just want a wand and uh, don't want to do the whole experience, you can go into Ollivander's. They also sell wands at other shops, um, like Borgen and Burke sells some of the darker wizard wands. You can get it at the main stores when you come in. Of course, that's not as fun, but it will get you a wand faster, and then you can do your magic. Let's see if these old wizard thingies still have the magic. Mediolo Jinx. <laughs> Let's head down Nocturne Alley, which is where the ne'er-do-wellers dwell, the Slytherins off the beaten path folk. And there's some magic to do in here. Also my favorite store. Incendio. It's doing it. It's smoking. Do you see it? Oh no, I, I, I'm not gonna hurt the bird, right? The bird's okay, right? Oh no, what, a di what have I done? Oh my gosh, I'm sorry, bird. I'm so sorry. Bird, I'm so sorry. You look ridiculous. I didn't mean it. Oh, thank you. I just love it back here. I think it's so immersive. It's so spooky, scary, and so cool. This one over here. Yeah, some of my favorite spells back here. Now, there's spells all over both Diagon Alley as well as Hogsmeade. If you get a wand, it'll work on all the spells. This one right here is my favorite spell. Locomotor Chimney Sweep. <laughs> I just love the little house all scooting up. It just, it delights me so. All right, now let's go into Borgen and Burks just to do some, some shopping, some browsing. One of my favorite details here is that if you look down in the basement, they're actually practicing a certain curse. And you can tell that by its green. It rhymes with abracadabra, kind of, but it's much scarier. Avada Kedavra. So that's how you know this is not a great place. If you like that fun little fact and more details, if you'd like to see more details, I did a whole video about all the Easter eggs and details you can find at Wizarding World of Harry Potter. We'll link it for you, but there's a ton of them in here. This is Borgen and Burke, so you might remember Malfoy stopping in for a few items can get wands here. I bought Sirius Black's wand here. You can also get Bellatrixes or Voldemort's or Narcissa Malfoy's or Draco's. You can get some of the kind of more off the straight and narrow wizards, witches wands here. Wait, look at these scarves. Do I need that? What is this? Oh, it's Nagini. Okay, this is awesome. 
only I didn't live in Florida where it's so hot all the time. I love finding unique Wizarding World souvenirs. There's tons of collectibles in here, mugs. You know, there's a mug I've had my eye on for a really long time and I feel like today is the day. Today's the day to buy it because it's the perfect day at Universal. I have had my eye on this Have You Seen This Wizard mug with Sirius Black for quite some time. $14.95. I feel like this needs to come home. I love visiting Diagon Alley. I could truly spend my whole day in the wizarding world and have and be perfectly happy. Let's go in a few more shops, do a few more magic spells before we leave. This is Madame Malkin's robes for all occasions. You can get a lot of nice things like you could literally buy a replica of Severus Snape's outfit if you wanted to. I think you might. I don't know you. You could buy Hermione's dress. Pretty, pretty fun. Always make sure you come say hello to the mirror. Tuck your shirt in, Scruffy. My shirt is tucked in, ma'am. Rude. One of my favorite things. This is actually a prop from the movie. Gilderoy Lockhout's beautiful robes from Chamber of Secrets. Gilderoy Lockhart. This right here is the line to go into Ollivander. So again, I definitely recommend coming early, especially if you can get that early park hours. You can get it by staying at any Universal Hotel, not just the expensive ones or anything. And they have been opening up Ollivander's as part of the early park admission if you want to do the wand experience. I will warn you, when I got to do it, they were only choosing one party at a time, so it was literally just me. I knew I'd be the one chosen to get the wand. Now they have gone down to, back to using more parties, so they will just choose one person in the whole group. Uh, so you may not get chosen to do the wand. Obviously, we can't come to Diagon Alley without a little stop into Weasley's Wizard Wheezes. Check it out, check out all the fun details. You've got the fireworks on the ceiling. You've got Professor Umbridge working over there. Fun games you can buy. You can buy your puking pastels and your fainting fancies. All kinds of games. They have muggle magic for their father. You can adopt yourself a pick me puff if you'd like to. This store is great. Extendable ears, decoy detonators. You know who. Egg and spoon race game, nose biting teacup, Chinese fortune sticks. This store is a delight. Even if you don't want to buy anything, come check it out. I was looking around for Exploding Snap, but I don't see it. It's a game. I bought it the last time I was here, took it home, and we played it. It is so much fun. It's a two person card game, but I feel like if you got another deck, you could make it a four person. That's what I was going to do. Um, ooh, a love potion necklace. That's adorable. And it was really fun, so if they restock Exploding Snap and you're a, a fan of card games, definitely recommend checking that out. Attached to Weasley's on the other side, you've got quality Quidditch supplies where you can get a lot of uh, your house Quidditch gear. They've got jerseys that you can get your name embroidered on the back, all kinds of stuff for your houses. You can even get the Quidditch balls, quaffles, snitches. Um, and I know it doesn't look like it, but you could buy these broomsticks if you wanted to. You can buy a Nimbus 2001 or a Firebolt if you want to. Good luck if you do. And then you've also got the candy shop here. This is a smaller candy shop compared to Honey Dukes over at the other side, but still delicious treats can be purchased. What kind of Slytherin stuff do I need today? All right, we've got time for one last bit of magic before we head on to the show. All right. Descendo. Descendo. There we go. Beautiful. I'm telling you, you got to do wand magic. It's so much fun. I love doing the wand magic. One of the most fun things about this land, you can get your own wand. This is the one that Mr. Ollivander, they recommended it to me. You can also get one from Ron, Hermione, Harry, Lupin, Sirius, Draco, Voldemort, Dumbledore, like Luna Lovegood, like dozens of characters have ones. It's so much fun. Again, we'll link the video where I literally did all of the magic in both lands and got the wand and everything, but that's a must for me. And now we're off to see a little show. Blues Brothers show happens a 
couple times today. I love them. If it's not clear yet, I love live entertainment in the theme parks. They're really, really fun. They get into character. They got Mabel and Jazz out there. So if you're a fan of live entertainment in the theme park and some good music, definitely check the My Universal app and see when they're going to be playing. Of all the entertainment we've seen today, I think the Beat Builders are my favorite. I just love them. But again, I love all live entertainment. They're also still out of virtual line passes for Fast and the Furious. So doesn't look like many other folks will get to ride that. Of course, keep checking back with those virtual line passes. They do pop up occasionally, but I'm glad we did that one earlier, secured that virtual line. And the last time I looked, Harry Potter and the Escape from Gringotts had a 65 minute wait. So we definitely avoided some long waits by hitting those attractions first. Hello. I'm Nigel. What's it's your name? Molly. It's nice to meet you, Nigel. Hi, Molly. And I'm Molly. Yes. Hi, Molly. What's your name? Moa Sibakame Shrunken Head. Shrunken Head. Yeah, okay. it's a name and a description. Oh, I got it's it. It's time, time same. It's a way of life. It is that, yeah. man. It is that. Hey, you know. Molly, I've got a question. Yes, Nigel. So you you have a warning label on your cab. Do I? Yes. you are up to no good. I am. And you have a Slytherin I am a Slytherin, yeah. Okay. Oh. I did not see that coming. I neither did I. Okay. Well. You were so friendly and approachable. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> this really threw me off. Okay. Okay. Well, you know what I always say. What? Slytherins are people. They're people, guys. They are we people. Are. Yes. They are people. We have and feelings. they do magic. And just because you're Slytherin doesn't mean you're evil. Yeah, I only mean, a it little. just means you're probably evil. Exactly. exactly. Right. Exactly. Probably. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like Molly most. Trust you. Not Thank definitely you. evil, but like a if little. I had sickles to gamble with, I would bet on evil. Okay. okay. Yeah. Like yes, how? Okay. Man. One to ten. How Slytherin are you? Depends on the situation. Okay, yeah, let's do what she says. Let's just do what she you know, says. Like, yeah. let's just yeah. do what she says. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 Had to say hello to the night bus driver and the shrunken head. If you get the chance when you're perusing through the park, definitely talk to them. They're very funny. They were talking about how I'm a Slytherin, but I seemed nice, but they, you know, wanted to wanted to make sure not to, you know, ruffle my feathers. They were very funny. So love them. Love them. And uh, now we're gonna go shoot aliens. Mm -hmm. I'm telling y'all, if you can use that wait time alert on the Universal app, just go into any attraction and you'll see it right there. You can swipe to whatever time you want, but that's been a great help today. Um, Men in Black Alien Attack was about 30 or so, and I said I didn't want to wait longer than 15, so I set the alert for that. It said, hey, Men in Black said 15. Yep. Go have a good time. So here we go. Men in Black Alien Attack is a shooter ride like Buzz Lightyear Space Ranger Spin, but instead of helping the evil Emperor Zerg, you've been recruited um, to assist Will Smith and fight the aliens. Hello. Thank you. The single rider line is open, but you do bypass the cool queue. So since it's only 15 minutes, I'm going to go through the regular queue. And this is one that if you can, I would wait to do the regular queue, especially if you're with other people, because that way it's more fun to be playing the game alongside your friends and family. That said, if it was like an hour or more, I wouldn't wait that long, but this one typically drops even on really busy days. It's a, it's a mildly busy day today, and it's down to 15 minutes, so. Not super busy, but we have seen wait times over an hour, so. I really like the Men in Black attraction. I actually think I like it more than Buzz Lightyear because you actually get to pick up the gun. And you're riding through a huge set with the aliens and it's really, really fun. And I definitely think you should do it even if you literally don't care at all about Men in Black. If you're 40 inches tall and like game rides, definitely check this one out. I don't love that it spins and it spins like pretty violently, which I don't love. But um, also weirdly, I got stuck on it for like maybe five minutes not even at the very very end my vehicle was stuck and they came on and said like hey sorry technical difficulties we're gonna get you moving as soon as possible but then when i got off they gave me one of these they give one to everyone i'm not special um but it's a re-entry pass for one person to go on any one attraction they want without waiting so i get to go to express pass for another attraction how very exciting 
And I didn't even think that that small of a stop warranted anything, but good job, Universal. Headed now to ride E.T. Adventure. The Simpsons ride makes me nauseous, I'm not gonna lie to you. So that's not part of my perfect day, but that is one I know a lot of people like. Right now it is a 35 minute wait, which isn't too bad. Um, but that's another one that I would say watch throughout the day, set that wait time alert. And a little bit later it should drop even more. But you can usually get on it around 30 or less. It does get very long uh, during the middle of the day. So. And then, the E.T. Adventure has reopened, which means we are going to E.T.'s home planet. And this is great timing because there's one more show I want to see. It's nearby. It starts in 12 minutes. He said this would be less than 10 minutes. So let's hope that works out. But OK, E.T. is an absolute must, must, must when you come to Universal Studios. It is the last opening day ride that's still here. And if you've never been on it, the first part of the ride is like the last 10 minutes of the movie when E.T. and Elliot are trying to escape. And then the second half of the ride takes you to E.T.'s planet. And it is something. I have questions for Steven Spielberg. That's what I'm going to say. But I love this attraction. It's amazing. You ride on a flying bicycle, think Peter Pan, but a bicycle. There's a smell in here. It's so good. I really hope we get the front row of the bike. That's the best row, but we'll see. I love the ET merchandise and the product placement of the Reese's Pieces. Well done on that. Every time I get off ET Adventure, I'm like, what did I just see? A masterpiece. That's what I saw. It's so good. It is a fever dream on ET's planet. I love Diggly, who's like the little corn doll. And then there's also the mushroom guy who goes, welcome home. And I can't wait for the day that E.T. says everybody's names again. Because uh, right now he just says, thank you, friend. But normally he says everybody's names. And now we're just in time to see one more show. We're just in time to catch the last showing of Animal Actors live on location. This is a show about animals, obviously. And they have live animals in the show that have actually been on movies and TV and they show how they do some of the stunts and things. So here we go. show is cute. It's not something I would say is a must do for most people. Um, I think the other two shows I saw today were better. But if you're someone like me that's been here a bunch of times and likes animals or something to sit down, it's cute. They had animals from the mummy and if we bought a zoo and the pug from in the black. So it was really cute. I like animals. Thought it was fun. But a lot of people might rather have spent that 30 minutes doing another attraction. Um, we are headed back. There's two more things I want to do attraction wise. We've got about 90 minutes of park time left. So let's do it. For my second to last attraction, we are going to do Transformers The Ride 3D. It has a 40 inch height requirement and you have been recruited by Optimus Prime and the Autobots to defeat the Decepticons 
by making sure that they don't get the Tesseract. Nailed it. If you have been on Spider-Man over at Islands of Adventure, this uses the same exact ride vehicle and technology. Combination of screens and live sets, and it is in 3D. Here's the thing about being at Universal. I love it, but I really don't think I'm qualified for like a lot of stuff they asked me to do. I wasn't qualified to help fight the aliens with Will Smith at Men in Black, and I'm certainly not qualified to help super robots, but I try hard. And isn't that what's most important? I always enjoy Transformers the Ride. It's down to 25 minutes now. It did not take that. Um, I thought if you're going to ride Transformers, if you wait till the end of the day, watch it, set those wait time alerts. I think it's really fun. It doesn't make me super nauseous like a lot of other simulators. I don't know. I just like it. And again, I don't even care about the ride or the movies, really. But I like that. There's a Transformer here. Of course we want a photo with Megatron. It's only polite. They rotate which Transformers are here for you to meet. They've got Bumblebee and Optimus as well. But we're gonna say hey to Megatron. All hail Megatron! Hello Megatron! Take a quick selfie. I have to say I like meeting Bumblebee more because Bumblebee plays good music and he's terrifying small children, so. It's me, I'm small children. There's about an hour of park time left and I would like to do one of my favorite underrated attractions here. Quincy's gonna be so proud of me, Shrek 4D. Now I don't think this is a must do for most people. It is typically one of the longer waits in the park right now just because of the limited capacity and how they have to seat the attraction. That one and Despicable Me right across the street usually have pretty long lines. Despicable Me is still sitting at 45 minutes, which is actually the longest line in the park right now. Um, but I really like the movie Shrek. I think Shrek 4D is funny. And while it only is a 20 minute wait, and I'd totally be happy to wait in that at this point of the day, because we've conquered everything else I wanted to do, I'm gonna go ahead and use this that I got over at Men in Black, because when you go through the express line on this, you get to see part of the pre-show, which is really funny. And I believe I'm going to go through the express line. Thank you! I think Shrek is hilarious. My husband thinks Shrek is very hilarious. And I'm glad that we get to go see part of the pre-show right now. You have to like Shrek, obviously. Um, and it's very like, like the chairs physically bounce you around like you're riding a horse and stuff at times. But I loved it and I think it's fun. So not a must do again for a lot of people, but once you've already done a lot of the other big rides in the park, if you haven't had to wait in line, why not? We've got just a little bit of park time left, but since we've already crossed off all the big attractions, I think we should use that time to get ourselves a coffee, don't you? That's always my answer. but. Here at the Today Cafe, they have really great sandwiches, salads, bakery treats, and what I love, coffee. This is a great spot to come for breakfast or a lighter lunch. I was actually gonna come for lunch here until I realized the new food trucks are open. Other great places for lunch, Richter Burger, if you'd like a burger, Simpsons Fast Food Boulevard. But look at these, ooh, I think we need to try that. So in here is a great spot. They've got Nitro Cold Brew, they've also got lattes, espresso, cappuccinos. If you want something a little fancier, but you don't want to do Starbucks or you want to get a great lunch with it. I love the big apple cheese, which is like a grilled cheese with apples on it. They've got a caprese sandwich, um, an Italian sandwich, avocado toast, really good stuff. If you're, again, looking for something lighter for a meal, great choice, but we got dessert. All right, here's my final snack slash dinner, I guess at this point. Um, here during our great day at Universal, I got myself a coffee, which is a surprise to know when there's a cold brew. Oh, hello. Um, cold brew coffee. And then this is the lemon blueberry cheesecake pop tart house made. Those look amazing. And then I also couldn't resist this other house made tart. Um, it has got some goat cheese and basil and Roma tomatoes. It's like a savory tart situation. Excited to end the day on this. First up this savory tart. There's so much goat cheese, and I, look, 
goat cheese. Simple, flaky crust, lots and lots of goat cheese, as I said. I'm trying to figure out what the spread is. It's some kind of delicious buttery spread. Tomato, basil, kind of reminds me of a caprese. I almost want there to be a balsamic glaze on the top. Ooh, that is some good cold brew. It's black, can obviously add cream and sugar, but that's got a lot of flavor. It almost has like a nutty taste to it. Now this is what I'm really excited about. I love like house-made Pop-Tarts, like the Lunchbox Tarts over at Woody's. They have the Tuck Tarts at the Royal Pacific Hotel here at Universal, but let's try this one. Mm-hmm, super flaky crust, lots of blueberry flavor. I wish there was a little more lemon. That is A plus. Doesn't taste like it was manufactured somewhere else. Just the fewest of park minutes left, but you know me, you know I like to end my park days in a big store. Now, I like to buy most of my souvenirs here in Diagon Alley, of course, but they have some of the Wizarding World stuff here if you didn't want to buy it there. And they've also got some other things, so let's check out a few items here at the Universal Studio Store. Even though Velocicoaster's at the other park, there's tons of Velocicoaster merchandise. I did a video all about Velocicoaster, their newest attraction. We can link that for you. And of course, we're going to do this at the other park, so we'll talk more about Velocicoaster then. Lots of kind of general universal stuff. Over this way is the Harry Potter section, so you can see it's not as much stuff as you can find over in the actual sections. I like these crossbodies though. Obviously not that one or that one. I wonder if they're sold out of Slytherin. Some Marvel goodies. Here's more of the Harry Potter stuff. See, they have a small selection of things. Um, so if you see something that you like when you're in Diagon Alley, you should probably snag it because you're probably not gonna find it here or you might if it's something um, basic or common, but if it's something specific, you're gonna to wanna to grab it there. Keep in mind too, if you're staying at a Universal Resort, they are still doing package pickup where they'll send it back to the resort. So keep that in mind. Um, they are planning to do it to the Universal Studio Store at City Walk where you can send things up. So check and see if that's available when you're here as well. Also, I just needed to talk to someone about this. Um, I don't know how I feel about the Shrek babies, so I'm gonna need some weigh-in. Thank you. If you're headed out of the park, obviously you are. What my recommendation is, um, check this store out, but the better store is the new one that just opened up on City Walk. They have more stuff and it's a cooler store, so definitely check that out. But I always like to breeze through here. Do I need trolls? I don't need trolls, but maybe I do, but I don't. All right, I'm gonna show a, one more thing before we go. And um, otherwise we've had a great day. The last place I like to stop is the It's a Wrap gift shop right here at the exit. One, look at this fine selection of Jaws merchandise. Also E.T. and Back to the Future. They got some great throwback things here. Wait, look at this hat. Do I need this hat? That's an awesome hat. I don't really do flat bills. I'm not that cool. Huh. But the reason I really wanted to show you it is they have a sale section, which is hard to believe that any theme park would have things on sale, but they do. They have Harry Potter stuff right here on sale. These Slytherin shirts, the down from 35 down to 23. They've got these shirts in all of the different houses very simple nice shirts with the house crest on it that one still says 30 hold on i'll find it here we go it's actually 20.99 i would buy this if it didn't say shrewd because now i'm going to go on a rampage about how i hate how shrewd is always the adjective used to describe slytherin couldn't be cunning cunning couldn't be ambitious had to be shrewd like oh cool ravenclaw you get to be wise cool you get to be loyal hufflepuff whatever Final tip, if you want your picture with the globe, come down here on the other side. Very few people know you can walk on the back side or realize it. And then you can take one without all the people in the background. 
Well, friends, that is a wrap on our day here at Universal Studios Florida, and it was a pretty perfect day. We did 14 different shows and attractions. We didn't wait in a long line for anything, plus got some yummy treats, did some wand magic, met some characters. Hopefully you can use these tips and tricks, get here early, set those wait time alerts, use the single rider line, and you can have a perfect day at Universal as well. Definitely let me know what questions you have in your comments. Let me know your favorite thing about Universal in the comments. In the meantime, make sure to rate, review, subscribe to our channel, follow us on social media at All Ears Net. And until next time, y'all, I'm Molly, and it's been magical. Want to see more of my videos? Click over here. Want to subscribe? You can do that right here. And also, ring that notification bell to make sure you get instantly notified anytime we post a new video. Thanks for following. See you real soon.